worship for Sunday, February the 6th, 2022, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, year C. The gospel story today is about the soon-to-be disciples' miraculous catch of fish. Jesus meets us at the shorelines of our own lives, going about our daily work, and calls us to lifelong discipleship. Caught up in God's abundant grace and fed out of that bounty, we are commissioned to go catch others. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various times and places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who've cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. Today's worship is being recorded and saved to YouTube. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber, and I come from St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Cambridge, Ontario, and we're glad to have you join us for worship. We will worship online only, at least through February the 13th. Prior to that time, Council will meet to reevaluate the risk of COVID. When they do so, I'll let you know what their decision is. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace, Make us heralds, witnesses of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The children's time. Fish from God. I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're making a difference, bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. I wonder how many of you children have ever gone fishing. Did you use a lure or bait? Did you fish from a boat or a dock or from the shore? And of course, did you catch any fish? And if you were successful, what did you do with the fish? Did you throw them back in or did you cook them and eat them? In today's story about Jesus, he sees that his soon-to-be disciples have fished all night, but have caught nothing. Not a single fish for all their hard work. So Jesus asks God to give them fish. And they were given so many fish that their boat begins to sink. One of the meanings of this story is that God gives us what we need. So today I want you to think about the things that God provides for you. Martin Luther is the pastor after whom our church was named. You can hear Luther's name in the name of our church, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Martin Luther wrote about the fish that God provides. That is, he wrote about the things that we need which God gives us. Here's Martin Luther's list when he wrote about God as creator. Martin Luther thanked God for shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all property. Now, you don't have a spouse, that's a husband or a wife, and you likely don't live on a farm with livestock, but you do have shoes, a house, and food and drink. Sometime today, I'd like you to make a similar list and then thank God for all the good gifts that you have. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer position. 
It may be hands open, facing up, to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded, head bowed, and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear Creator God, you have given us a beautiful planet to live on, and you provide for all that we need. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In an email to many of your parents and on our church website, stpaulscambridge.org, our children's bulletins that you're welcome to work at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. Our response to the children's time is the hymn, Come, You Thankful People, Come. It's number 693 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship, and it will be on the screen. Jesus calls the disciples to fish for people. Jesus' teaching of God's word has begun to draw great crowds. For Simon, James, and John, Jesus' teaching inspires hospitality, then obedience, and then risk. After Jesus' creative power is revealed, fear and amazement lead these three fishermen to leave everything behind to become apostles. Please rise as you're able 
for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, Jesus saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. Those who were fishing had gone out of the boats and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then Jesus sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that the boats began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had just taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching human beings. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Simon answered Jesus, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Can you imagine how weary and defeated these fishermen were? Disappointed at the lack of success, exhausted and disenchanted. Here's a video clip of a portion of today's Gospel reading. It's from a video series about Jesus called The Chosen. Put that down for a catch. A little farther out. I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. At your word. If that clip piques your interest, we have the DVD of the first two seasons new in our church library, thanks to Carrie. The disciples are weary, defeated, disappointed, exhausted, and disenchanted. What does this carpenter Jesus know about fishing? And who does he think he is to offer a suggestion to professional fishermen? Yet they do what Jesus suggests. At first, it seems that exactly as Simon Peter had anticipated, nothing happens. Let's pick up that video again at this point in the story.
I told you. I told you. I told you. The disciples are weary, defeated, disappointed, exhausted, and disenchanted. But then Jesus provides for them all that their old way of life offered. Jesus gives them fish in super abundance. I love the little smirk that Jesus has at the end of this clip and the joy that he gets from watching the fishermen struggle with this overabundant catch. It's as if Jesus is saying to them, so you think what you need is a good catch of fish. All right then, that's exactly what you'll get. Well, we too know what it is to be weary, defeated, disappointed, exhausted, and disenchanted. If not from COVID, then simply because life in general can certainly be difficult. And we too may think that what we need is just more. Just more of the good parts of life. Maybe just more money, or time, or possessions. Have you heard the term affluenza? It's made up of two words, affluence and influenza. Affluenza. In today's gospel reading, the fishermen's boats are so full of fish that they begin to sink, a problem caused by abundance. Some of us experience undiagnosed affluenza. Our boats are so full of opportunities, resources, responsibilities, and invitations that we may feel like we are sinking. At times, life is simply just too much. We know what it is to be weary, defeated, disappointed, exhausted, and disenchanted. But sometimes it's not from having too much. Sometimes our weariness comes from being told that we are lacking. It seems to me that many of the advertisements that we're bombarded with are trying to convince us that we're missing something. A whiter smile which can be fixed with a certain brand of toothpaste. Or what we need is fresher breath provided by a specific mouthwash or chewing gum. Perhaps what we lack is a nicer car, one that is more reflective of our, of our importance, our status. So many of the voices in the world try to convince us that we are insufficient, that we don't have enough, that we don't know enough, that we don't matter enough. But then along comes Jesus with the miracle pointing to God's abundant provision, signaling that we will indeed be given all that we need. I think we're on the doorstep of a terrific opportunity. As the pandemic settles down and as the virus becomes less dangerous, as we learn to live with COVID, life will return not to normal, but to a new normal. And our opportunity is this. For the past two years, we have not been able to do many of the things that previously had kept us busy. So we are able to evaluate and then to test our options. Not having done many things for two years gives us a chance to discern if we want to return to doing them. Or is it time to try something different? And I think that's not unlike what the disciples experienced in today's gospel reading. We could be on the doorstep of one of those times of change, one of those opportunities given us by God. And we've seen that already happening. Lots of people have left their former jobs to do something different. Maybe something that matters more. Or maybe something that provides a better work-life balance. As you enter into the new normal, as you face these decisions and opportunities, remember that God is with you, calling you, as Jesus called the disciples, to put out in deep water. Take this opportunity to think a little deeper about your life. Take this opportunity to try, try something different. Who knows what God will reveal to you. Let's return now to today's gospel story. Ah. 
Merhaba. You as well. Yes, you, James and John. Come, follow me. I'll take the fish into market and settle up Simon's death. I'll get some help to fill both of these boats. Are you sure? Yes, go. What will you tell Ima? <laughs> We've just been called by the man we prayed for our entire lives. And you ask me, what will I say when you miss supper? <laughs> go, now. With the disciples in today's gospel reading, we know what it is to feel weary, defeated, disappointed, exhausted, and disenchanted. So maybe you want more, more time, more depth. Or maybe life is just too much, too many opportunities, resources, responsibilities, and invitations. Or maybe you've begun to suspect that you're missing something. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus provides a miracle that points to God's abundant provision, signaling that we will indeed be given all that we need. As COVID retracts into our rearview rear mirrors, we will have a God-given opportunity to evaluate and test our options as we move into and begin to form a new normal. Maybe the word for us today from Jesus is one that Yogi Berra is reported to have said once. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. May it be so among us. And the people said, Amen. Our hymn of the day is, Will You Come and Follow Me? It's number 798 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship and will be on the screen.
the Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. And so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God made, saying, God of grace, and responding, hear our prayer. Equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have received, the forgiveness, grace, and love shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with a waiting world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O God of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Reveal your splendor in fiery sunsets and in deep blue twilights. Teach us to recognize you in the beauty of our natural world. Move us to mitigate the effects of the global climate crisis, especially among the poor. God of grace, hear our prayer. Soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceive and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse toward violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. We pray also for all affected by flooding and landslides in Brazil, for the work of the United Nations Security Council, for the safety and well-being of all Olympic athletes, and for the host city, Beijing, and for peace and security among historically black colleges and universities facing bomb threats this past week. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain, including those whom we name before you. God of grace, hear our prayer. The disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnership with community organizations and ministries. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccinations. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become more overwhelmed. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our ancestors in faith who boldly answered your call. By their example, give us courage to live in faith and to proclaim your mercy until the day that you gather us all into your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in 
today and forever. Amen. Our sending song is We Are Called. It's number 798 and on the screen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>